As a member of the United States Armed Forces, you provide an important global role in safeguarding national security. You also play a role in safeguarding our agricultural economy, our ecosystems, and in expediting military operations. While on location in the United States and abroad, military vehicles, vessels, aircrafts, containers, and equipment are exposed to pests, pathogens, insects, invasive species, and other biological materials. Operational washdown and agricultural inspection procedures help to ensure all biological materials are completely removed before transport in the U.S. and abroad. In this video, we will define why it's critical to properly clean equipment and conveyances, removing any biological materials before transport. Describe the steps to plan and prepare for washdown, including required equipment. Demonstrate the washdown process step by step with focus on common problem areas. Explain the agricultural inspections required after washdown is complete. And finally, provide resources and points of contact for additional information. The U.S. Navy and Navy Entomology Center of Excellence, NISI, follows several Department of Defense policies, instructions and manuals for the control of pests and invasive species. Guidance for recommended procedures to prevent introduction of invasive species is summarized in the Armed Forces Pest Management Board's Technical Guide 31 and its supplements. Navy and DOD instructions, policies, U.S. regulations, and other service-specific instructions should be reviewed and followed in conjunction with this video. Biological materials include soil, invasive plants and seeds, insects and invertebrates, pests and pathogens, and other hitchhiking species. Biological materials pose many risks. Pests such as the spotted lanternfly, coconut rhinoceros beetle, Asian citrus psyllid, and Asian longhorn beetle can permanently destroy or impact agricultural crops or ecosystems. Invasive aquatic plant species such as hydrilla, giant salvinia, water hyacinth, and alligator weed can clog critical waterways and negatively impact aquatic ecosystems. Biological materials can carry pathogens that cause diseases such as swine flu or foot and mouth disease that harm animal populations. Certain highly infectious pathogens can create medical and health issues for you and the public. What are the economic and mission impacts of following these important requirements? Properly cleaned equipment minimizes the negative impact that biological materials can have on humans, animals, plants, or the environment. Properly cleaned equipment will clear customs and border protection inspections upon arrival back to the United States or abroad. Properly cleaned equipment minimizes preventable delays in transportation of critical material. Proper cleaning also avoids the time and expenses to re-clean and inspect when contaminated items do not pass inspections. Cleaned conveyances are one consideration, but harmful organisms can catch a ride on all items. Microscopic pests and larvae tuck into cracks and crevices on footwear and shipping containers. Procedures for cleaning, disinfection, sanitation, and containment must be followed. Simply knocking off dirt and dust is never enough to decontaminate. Animal and plant pathogens and pests are easily transported on footwear, uniforms, and other items that military personnel wear and use in the field, at home, and abroad. Harmful organisms can be found on weapons, electronics, and communication equipment, tents, canvas, and camouflage nets and boxes, vessels, shipping containers, ISUs, and aircraft pallets, and wood packaging present special challenges. Certain wheeled and tracked vehicles can be especially problematic because contaminants get trapped in treads, cleats, and tiny crevices. A number of personnel have key roles and responsibilities for compliance with washdown and inspection procedures. Unit commanders will ensure DOD customs and border clearance policies and procedures and service requirements are met when personnel or equipment are deploying or returning across United States borders and within the U.S. and territories. Air, sea, port, and transportation commanders will ensure requirements are followed to the maximum extent practicable. Personnel and material may not move from facilities unless they are free of soil, pest infestation, and prohibited agricultural items. 
local installation level pest management or natural resources personnel will assist when material requires quarantine or when pest issues require more significant fumigation, containment, or control efforts. Assigned personnel will clean and inspect deployed and redeployed equipment, conveyances, and other material following proper DOD procedures and local and host country guidelines. Planning and preparation for washdown and inspection of conveyances will vary by location. In most situations, washdown facilities will already be established. In others, facilities and assets will be minimal and may need to be developed or modified. Washdown areas must be designed with thorough cleaning protocols, safety of personnel, efficiency of vehicle movement and ease of work in mind. When planning, start as early as possible to interact with location contacts, inspect the area, and begin preparations. Schedule a conference with leadership and others including logistics, operations, legal, pest management, or natural resources, and local agricultural inspectors. Identify the type of vehicles or materials to be cleaned and the biological materials or other contaminants they may be carrying when they arrive. Identify available equipment and materials and begin sourcing what needs to be procured. Make a plan for fresh water and disposal of wastewater. Create a schedule. Consider the condition of vehicles on arrival and the number of personnel. There are multiple variables that can shorten or increase cleaning time of military conveyances. However, a general rule of thumb is that tracked vehicles such as AAVs Bradley fighting vehicles, or tanks, can take significantly longer to adequately clean due to the intricacies of the tracks. Finally, organize and train washdown crews. Identify drivers and someone to guide vehicles into the wash area or onto the wash rack. Maintain a high safety margin. Recommended equipment and personal gear, including PPE, are important to the crew to successfully conduct an ag washdown operation. A typical washdown facility has the following layout. Vehicle entrance, pre-staging area, wash area, inspection area, staging area for clean and inspected gear, and a loading area where clean equipment can be transferred directly without recontamination. Once equipment has been turned in for cleaning, it will remain in the pre-staging area awaiting movement. The wash area will vary by location. It may be a cement surface with or without built-in drainage. Some locations will have existing temporary or permanent structure. There may be one or more wash racks. In all locations, clearance between the bottom of the vehicle and the ground is critical. If the vehicle is too close to the ground, crew efficiency and the inspection and rewash process are affected. When washdown is complete, Trained personnel inspect each vehicle thoroughly. They also complete required reports stating that it meets agricultural inspection requirements. The staging area for clean, inspected vehicles needs special consideration. To avoid recontamination, a quarantine, pest-free storage area away from the elements is needed. Vehicles should not be stored near or beneath trees or vegetation that may harbor pests vehicles should be covered if possible. Water pumps and hoses are critical equipment. Design, output, and reliability of pumps can affect the speed of the operation and overall schedule. Pumps must be capable of sustaining a minimum output pressure of 90 PSI over multiple hours of continuous use. Fire department pumper trucks work well in the absence of adequate standing reservoirs and are usually available at any seaport, airport, or military base. A minimum of two hose lines are needed for each individual wash rack or wash area. Large quantities of fresh water are used in a relatively short period of time. When planning, consider the source of fresh water. Again, water pressure of at least 90 PSI must be maintained. In some areas, large quantities of fresh water are not available. Though not ideal, when only gray water is available, 
it can be used to conduct operations. One must keep in mind that gray water is non-saline and non-chlorinated and may be a potential disease carrier for those in close contact during washing operations. Strict compliance with PPE is recommended. Black water or sewage contaminated water is not authorized and should never be used. Salt water should never be used. It will corrode vehicles and aircraft. In some areas, wash water can be reused. Consider containment strategies during the planning phase. After washdown, used water contains all the contaminants being rinsed, including dirt, fuel, oil, soap, chemical residues, plus pesticides, bacteria, pathogens, and plant and animal debris. Release of used water, debris, and contaminants into the local environment may have negative effects, polluting ground or surface water sources for local residents, ecosystems, and harming aquatic life. Be sure the washdown setup minimizes the release of used water. Most, if not all, washdown operations require the use of an oil and water separator to collect and treat the large amount of petroleum, oil, and lubricant material removed from military vehicles. Always ensure that operations comply with laws and regulations of the host nation to maintain positive relationships. Amphibious vehicles, fixed and rotary wing aircraft, land vehicles, tracked vehicles and vessels are subject to situations where they become contaminated with pests, pathogens and other biological materials. Washdown standards require exacting and detailed cleaning. This includes removing soil from recessed areas such as tie-down channels, under shelving, deep into corners and in other hard-to-reach areas such as under floorboards. The cleaning of wheeled and tracked vehicles is by far the most difficult and time-consuming task of an entire operational washdown. This video will take an in-depth look at washdown procedures for the High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle or Humvee. What is demonstrated for the Humvee can be applied to other conveyances. Each vehicle arriving at the pre-cleaning area will undergo preliminary cleaning before being washed down. Pre-cleaning involves vacuuming, sweeping, and wiping down. For the Humvee and other conveyances, start by opening all interior and exterior compartments. Clean the vehicle cab, all passenger areas, and all storage cubbies. You can broom sweep, use compressed air, dry vacuum, or wet vac as needed. The interiors must be soil and contaminant free including under floor plates. Remove all trash. Clean all storage and tool compartments. Remove everything inside again and use tools necessary to remove every contaminant. If keys cannot be found, make provisions to cut the locks. To clean cracks and crevices, use small screwdrivers, putty knives, wire brushes or other tools as appropriate. Remove the battery. Clean the battery and battery box. Reinstall the battery. Remove the outside dual wheels and spare tires. Place these items in the back for later cleaning at the wash area. Remove detachable parts. These may include payloads, seat cushions, sideboards, armored plates, canvas, sides, tops, engine packs, radios, and cryptology equipment, and any personal gear. Detachable items need to be cleaned and then staged in the available pest-free zone prior to sending the vehicle to the wash rack. Carefully check the radiator, which may be hot. Radiators have been identified as a common problem area that needs special focus and attention. When cool, hand pick or sweep leaves or other vegetation, dirt, insects, such as arthropods or other debris. A wire or other brush may be needed. Once pre-cleaning is complete, the vehicle enters the wash area. Washdown is done with fresh water at high pressure. Use steam only if directed. It may remove valuable protective coatings. Never use salt water to clean. Open the engine compartment. Methodically clean the engine compartment, including all surfaces. 
With many types of surfaces, engine compartments have been identified as a common problem area. Thoroughly inspect and remove vegetation and debris. As you move around the exterior, pay special attention to other common problem areas. Clean the grill of soil, dirt, and debris. Clean vents of any debris. Clean dirt and debris that has collected in footsteps and ledges. Other common problem areas are under the vehicle. Pay special attention to wheel wells, tires, ledges, universal joints, and support beams. Behind the wheel wells, carefully clean for soil and dirt. This is a common area for debris to build up. For wheel axles, spray water directly into holes until the water runs clear. Pay particular attention to undercarriages, fender wells, springs, bumpers, behind or between armored plates, and any area where soil may collect. Be sure that the area rinse is clean before moving on. Use tools if high pressure water is not enough. Check ledges of the undercarriage as mud tends to accumulate. On storage compartments, lift up or open panels. Some compartments do not have a drain hole. Use rags to remove gravel and dirt. On tracked vehicles, remove soil that's impacted into treads, around rubber cleats, and between and behind the tread guides and roller supports. Tracked vehicles will take considerable time. Finally, wash any parts that had been removed, such as dual wheels, spare tires, and armored plates. After washing, avoid transfer of soil to tires of clean vehicles. Many vehicles have problem areas. Consult selectable guides prior to cleaning and washdown, and use them for reference to ensure a successful inspection. Keep in mind that invasive species are highly adaptable and that both new and unique combinations of problem areas can be found across all vehicle types. Finally, each conveyance type has specifications for where and how they may be cleaned. When washdown of a vehicle is complete, its clean parts and accessories are reassembled in the available pest-free staging zone ready for the next step, inspection. Requirements for agricultural inspection, custom and border protection inspection, clearance coordination, reporting and training procedures are found here in DTR 4500.9-R, Chapter 506, DOD, Customs and Border Clearance Senior Agriculture Agent. In brief, Chapter 506 states that each vehicle must be inspected thoroughly to ensure all soil, debris, pests and pathogens have been removed. Inspectors may use a flashlight, screwdriver, putty knife or other tools to search for and remove contamination that may have been missed during washdown. Inspectors pay special attention to crevices and to the unique problem areas of each vehicle. Inspectors may work from a checklist to ensure all areas were cleaned. Checklists can be modified to suit mission-specific needs. Specific risk areas will vary by the conveyance, location, and other circumstances. Top access and bottom access checkpoints will be inspected. The inspection process cannot be taken lightly. If vehicles or other materials do not pass, they may need to be washed out a second time and re-inspected. You can help ensure a successful inspection by paying attention to the problem areas discussed earlier in the video double-checking checklists, or contact NISI for additional information. Upon final inspection, clean vehicles and materials are ready to be re-embarked. If they are removed from the pest-free area, a new washdown and inspection will be required. In addition to the DOD policies, instructions and manuals listed here, other resources and references are available to answer questions. Additional information on Navy pest management programs and foreign and domestic quarantine regulations are also available.
For questions or comments concerning this training, please contact the Navy Entomology Center of Excellence, NISI, by phone or email. NISI offers additional information and training and has a website with additional technical information.